Greetings everyone. Welcome to the course Deep Learning in Action for Medical Imaging. I am your instructor Talha Anwar. Who am I? This is not important. The important is what I am going to teach you in this course. But for the sake of introduction, I am a biomedical engineer and a data scientist. My area of expertise is in medical imaging, biosignal processing and natural language processing along with machine learning and deep learning. I have more than 10 publications in this regard. This course aims toward practical approach of solving different deep learning competition in medical imaging. In my career, I have seen people who can do MNIST, Cypher, CATS and DOE classification, but they got stuck when they have to face a real life problem. In this course, you will learn how to enroll in any deep learning competition and how to find a solution like a pro. First thing is that who should attend this course. This course is not a basic or beginner, so it should have some prerequisite. So who should attend this course? You should have some familiarity with Python, familiarity with CNN theory because I am not going to discuss that what is convolution layer, what is max polling, what is skip function etc. I am not also going to show you how to build a convolution neural network from scratch. We are using pre-trained convolution neural networks such as ResNet, DenseNet, etc. You should have some hands-on experience with a machine learning or deep learning problem, either with scikit-learn, Keras, PyTorch or any framework of your choice. If you want to learn a new framework, you want to win a deep learning competition or you want to build portfolio in medical imaging, then this course is for you. This course is using PyTorch. Why this course is using PyTorch? PyTorch community is more responsive than TensorFlow. PyTorch is easy to convert to Onyx for inference. Onyx is Open Neural Network Exchange. After converting to Onyx, you can use the model in any framework, in any language, either C, R, on any system of your choice. PyTorch is more flexible, more Pythonic and conceptual. And it is easy to debug and easy to install as compared to TensorFlow. TensorFlow is a bit difficult to install because you have to figure out the CUDA QDNN version where PyTorch is more easy to install. But this course is not using vanilla PyTorch because vanilla PyTorch has an organized code which is difficult to read. It is difficult to add state of art functionalities such as mixed precision. Stochastic, weighting, average, gradient, accumulation. You have to write a lot of code, which and everyone write the code in their own style, which make the reader difficult to read the code of everyone who is using PyTorch. The solution is to use PyTorch Lightning because it increases the readability. It is easy to reproduce the result by deterministic behavior of PyTorch Lightning. It checks the code error before trading using well sanity check, which is actually Check the validation data first. Display bar to track progress. Provide a structure way to write a code. It is easy to switch to CPU, GPU or TPU. And it also provides some state of art functionality such as mixed precision, stochastic, weighted average, etc. You can also train the model for fixed number of hours, for fixed number of epochs. You can do a lot of things easily in PyTorch Lightning which are difficult to do in PyTorch because PyTorch Lightning is a wrapper of PyTorch and it provides more functionality. This course is using Linux. I have done an experience in which I load the data from CPU using different number of processors. If I use two processors, it takes 89 seconds in Linux and 80 seconds in Windows on the same data set on the same PC. With the number of processor equal to 16, it takes 25 seconds in Linux and 177 seconds in Windows. So we can see that if we increase the number of processor in Linux, the computational time decreases. But in Windows, the computational time increases because Windows does not support multiprocessing in PyTorch easily. The first section is binary image classification in which we will learn how to load data from image folder. If you have two folders like train and validation and each folder have two classes, how you can load the data. How data flow from folder to model training. 
how to apply augmentation to data data how to train a model evaluate and how to get the prediction the second section is multi class image classification in this section we will learn how to use augmentation using albumentation which is the best library for augmentation how to use loss function how to use evaluation metric how to set a scheduler how to load and save model in this competition which is covid 19 x-ray competition we achieved 18th position the third section is multi label image classification this is an advanced section in which we learn how to load data from data frame how to take two input at a time this data is related to eye images and we have to take and we have to take the image of left and right eye simultaneously in this section we will learn how to use callback how to use test function in pytorch lightning to evaluate the model by a script provided by the competition organizer the position on leaderboard i got is 100 the section 4 is a capstone project in which we will see how to find percentage of area infected by covid disease in ct scan slide how to come up with a solution i will walk through the code to describe the capstone project we will also learn how to assemble the model we are not going to do average assembling but we will learn a secret way to do model assembling which will enhance the performance on the leaderboard the competition is organized at coda lab at, at the time of recording i i am at position 3 because this competition is ongoing competition so it can be changed when you are watching this if you have any issue just ask in q and a section of the course more section of the course are coming which are image segmentation and object detection this is the end of the introduction i will see you in the next section where are we are going to see where we are going to see deep learning by a practical approach Thank you